So Harry gets the memory from uh, Slughorn that Dumbledore needs, and he runs off to Dumbledore's office, and somewhere around 494, 496 in the American edition, um, Harry's talking with Slughorn. Okay, this is where he gets the memory. Um, and what we see is da, 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 da. actually, sorry, this is um, the memory that he got from Slughorn, and this is Slughorn talking with Tom Riddle. Slughorn. A horcrux is the word used for an object in which a person has concealed part of their soul. Riddle, I, yeah, but how does that work? Well, you split your soul, you see. Hide part of it in an object outside the body. Then, even if one's body is attacked or destroyed, one cannot die, for part of the soul remains earthbound and undamaged. But, of course, existence in such a form. Okay. Few would want it, Tom. Very few. Death would be preferable. Why? Why would death be preferable? What is he saying about existence in such a form? The soul is supposed to be whole, complete, united. Tom Riddle's not thinking about that at all. How do you split your soul? The soul is supposed to remain intact and all. Splitting it is an act of violation. It's against nature. Okay? It is a ripping apart of the fabric of nature. Slughorn is suggesting. Tom Riddle. Yeah, but how do you do it? It's almost like he's going, yeah, but that's what I want to do. I want to rip apart nature. How? How do you do this? Well, by an act of evil. The supreme act of evil. Committing murder. Why is murder the supreme act of evil? You're taking away someone's life. You're not just taking away their will. You're not just taking away their memory. Okay? Killing rips the soul apart. The wizard intent upon creating a horcrux would use the damage to his advantage. He would encase the torn for How? There's a spell. Do not ask. I don't know. I'm, I don't mean to offend. No, no, no. Bright boy like you, you know. What I don't understand, though, is, I mean, would one horcrux be much use? You okay, know, what has Slughorn already told him? In order to create even one horcrux, what must you do? you got to kill somebody. Yeah, but would one really do the job? I mean, can you split your soul only once? Wouldn't it be better? Make you stronger to have your soul in more pieces? Make you stronger? Did Slughorn say anything about strength? I mean, for instance, isn't seven the most powerfully magical number? Merlin's beard, Tom. Seven. I mean, it's bad enough to think of killing one person, but seven? All hypothetical. Yes, yes. Okay. So, Harry and Dumbledore talk, and Dumbledore tells Harry right about page 500. As far as I know, as far I am sure as Voldemort knew, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two. Really? There'd never been a wizard before Tom Riddle who killed more than two people? There are never, you know, there are no history of serial murderers, no Jack the Rippers in the wizarding world. Man, that's pretty nice <laughs> when you think about it. So why does Dumbledore say, as far as I know, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two? Might he be thinking of somebody? Just ask him. Do we know of a wizard who killed more than two? Do we know Grindelwald killed more than two? You're missing somebody real easy. Peter Pettigrew. 
we're told, killed 13 muggles. Shouldn't that mean 13 shreds of his soul? His soul ought to be in 13 parts. But don't you have to do a spell too? Yeah. No. no, you have to do a crux. Yeah. Oh, I get what you're saying. Killing. I get what you're saying. Killing is what splits the soul. Okay? 13 also is the unlucky number. Okay? So here he says, um, or Dumbledore says, four years ago I received what I considered certain proof that Voldemort had split his soul. Harry, well, how? You handed it to me. The diary. Harry, I don't understand. The diary had been a horcrux. Harry, I still don't understand. It worked as a horcrux is supposed to work. In other words, of soul concealed inside it was kept safe and had undoubtedly played its part in preventing the death of its owner. But there could be no doubt that Riddle really wanted that diary read. The piece of his soul to inhabit or possess somebody else so that Slytherin's monster would be unleashed again. Harry, well, he didn't want his hard work to be wasted. Quite correct. Okay. The careless way in which Voldemort regarded this Horcrux seemed most ominous to me. In other words, Voldemort wanted the diary to be read by somebody so that that person would learn how to open the Chamber of Secrets. But in order to do that, Voldemort's Horcrux would have to be exposed to that person. Dumbledore says, I took that as being ominous. Why? Because if you only had one Horcrux, you wouldn't go showing that around to people. So there must be more. Okay. Then you told me two years later, Mort said, I who have gone further than anybody along the path that leads to immortality. He said, I thought I knew what that meant. He was referring to his horcruxes, plural, Harry, which I do not believe any other wizard has ever had, but it fit. Voldemort had seemed to grow less human with the passing years. Information he had undergone seemed to me to be only explicable if his soul was mutilated beyond the realms of what we might call usual evil. Well, how does Voldemort look? What's his appearance? Snake-like. Snake okay. Why? Because part of his one of his horcruxes is in a snake? Okay, I mean you could get all biblical. Because, you know, the Garden of Eden, you know, and the serpent and all that. Okay, it's possible. Snakes are symbolic of evil. Okay. And notice, snakes aren't human, obviously. They're animals. They're beasts. But Voldemort doesn't look lion-like. He doesn't look horse-like. He doesn't look tiger-like. No, he looks like a snake. Why? Or why? Because people associate snakes with negative People are afraid of snakes, generally. Okay? Most people, generally, most people don't like snakes. I mean, if you're weird like me, you love snakes. Okay? But most people, if you're in a classroom and there was a snake slithering around on the ground, you wouldn't come in the classroom. You know, Ashton's going, hell no. Wouldn't even come close to me. Okay? <laughs> I'd come in, you know, wrapped around my neck, you know, unless it were poisonous. It's showing how Voldemort is becoming less and less human. As he does what? Rips apart his soul. Okay? Harry. Soft impossible to kill. Dumbledore, mm, kind of, but there are other reasons to think why a philosopher's stone would appeal less than Horcruxes. The elixir of life extends life. It doesn't give life. Okay? So you have to keep drinking it. So Dumbledore keeps talking. He says, now, Harry, armed with this information, this is somewhere around 502, 504, page 470 in the British one. Armed with this information, the crucial memory you've succeeded in procuring for us, we're closer to the secret of finishing Lord Voldemort than he did. He said, now, remember what he said. Isn't seven the most powerfully magical number? Harry, he made seven horcruxes. 
but they could be anywhere. Hidden, buried, invisible? Very well done, Harry. I'm glad you understand the magnitude of the problem. But no, not seven, six. The seventh part of his soul, however, maimed, resides inside his regenerated body. Now, what has Harry been telling Lupin and the others repeatedly throughout this book? I can see what he's thinking. Okay, what else? What does he tell them about double? <clears throat> He could be wrong. Okay. Dumbledore says Voldemort makes six Horcruxes. Okay, because so you have Voldy, that's one. Okay. The diary. Okay. Locket. Ring. Cup. Diadem. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And? And then you need the part that was killed when you defeated Harry. Yeah, that's down here. What do you mean the part that was killed when he defeated Harry? Or, I mean, sorry, when, when he tried to kill Harry. Yeah, down here. But. How many does he actually have? Okay. But you can kind of count this one as not, because we'll just call this the, this is the original part. It's the leftovers. Yeah, the leftovers. But he makes seven. But seven plus the original one do. Now, seven is the perfect number. Okay? So what's then eight? It's an unperfect number. It's, it's not seven. Seven's perfect, so what is not perfect? Imperfect. Imperfect. Okay. This is the accidental horcrux. These are the intentional ones. So that according to what Voldemort planned, you had one, and I don't care what order you put them in, three, four, five, six, Seven. He didn't mean to do this, but he did, which will be important later on. So here's an example of where Dumbledore. That seventh piece of soul will be the last that anybody wishing to kill Voldemort must attack, the piece that lives in his body. Yeah, but it's actually the eight because there are seven others. Do you think he's just saying that to Harry to not tell him straight up that you're going to have to die? Because that be like Dumbledore. Possible. Mm -hmm. Giving him enough information, but not all of it. Okay. Because keep in mind, what did he tell Harry at the end of book five? You became more important than my plan. Well, it, it seems to be now that the plan has taken, you know, front and center again. Okay, you've forgotten, you've already destroyed one of them, and I've just... Okay, so the diary's gone. Dumbledore says, I've destroyed another. Oh, yeah, the ring. The... By the way, what happened to your hand? <laughs> okay, had it not been, forgive me, the lack of seemly modesty for my own prodigious skill and for Professor Snape's timely action, when I returned to Hogwarts, injured, I might not have lived to tell the tale. However, Withered Hand does not seem an unreasonable exchange for a seventh of Voldemort's soul. What does he mean? A Withered Hand is not an unreasonable exchange. Sacrificed. He sacrificed his hand. Which hand is it? It's his wand hand. It's his right hand. That is, it's the hand of power. It's the arm of strength. You know, the, the right arm of God, you know, kind of language. All right? Harry, how did you find it? Come on, Harry, do we have to go through all this again? Marvolo gone, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, he says four horcruxes remain. So in our theory of a seven-part soul, four horcruxes remain. And what do they talk about? The locket. They talk about the locket. They talk about the cup. They talk about the snake. The 
They're not, they don't know about this one. What's the 800 pound elephant sitting in the room? On the night that he cursed you, Harry, he transferred powers to you. Dumbledore tells Harry in book two at the end. And Harry interprets that for the reader. Anybody remember what Harry says? He put a bit of himself into me. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Okay. So, they talk about the things that Voldemort likes to collect. So, Harry. Oh, oh! The locket. Hufflepuff's cup. And Dumbledore says, and I'd be prepared to bet, perhaps not my other hand, but a couple of fingers. They became Horcruxes three and four. The remaining two, assuming the Notice how he kind of backs off the assurance. He created a total of six uh, are more of a problem, but I'll hazard a guess that having secured objects on Hufflepuff and Slytherin, he set out to track down objects owned by Gryffindor and Claw. Four objects from the four founders would have exerted a pull, powerful pull over Voldemort's imagination. The only known relic of Gryffindor remains safe. What's he talking about? Sword. The sword, because where is it? In his office. But is the sword the only known relic of Godric Gryffindor? The sorting hat, hello? Gryffindor whipped me off his head. Okay. So, Harry, do you think that's why I wanted to come back to Hogwarts? To find something? Yep, that's why, Harry. So Harry says, um, but even if he got something of Ravenclaw's or Gryffindor's, that leaves a sixth, unless he got both. Dumbledore, I don't think so. I think I know what the sixth Horcrux is. Horcrux is. You're forgetting the snake. You can use animals. I'll send it to do so. Why? Where? What, what book does it say? It's inadvisable to use animals as Horcruxes. Because to confide a part of your soul to something that can think and move for itself is obviously a very risky business. What if one morning Nagini to go off somewhere. So Voldemort was still at least one Horcrux short of his goal of six when he entered your intention of killing you. I am sure he was intending to make his final Horcrux with your death. But he didn't. Technically he did. As we know, he failed. Really? Yes? Okay. If you made Harry the Horcrux, was, since you didn't have to kill someone to make a Horcrux, did he, like, use the death of Lily and James, or was it that he intended to kill Harry? Is that enough? Good question. Let's go back and see what the book says. He seems to reserve the process of making Horcruxes for particularly significant. You would certainly have been that. He believed that in killing you, he was destroying the danger of prophecy, prophecy had outlined. He believed he was making himself invincible. I'm sure he was intending to make his final horcrux with your death. As we know, he failed. After an interval of some years, however, he used Nagini to kill an old man, Frank Rice. Right, so Nagini wasn't a horcrux when Harry died. At that point. He already had his seven. Right. Okay. And it might then have occurred to him to turn her into his last horcrux. Okay. So, back to your question. Maybe with this listing, we've got it wrong. Maybe, technically speaking, Harry isn't a Horcrux. Even though, technically speaking, there is a piece of Voldemort's soul in Harry. Do you think that he just did it on accident and doesn't think that Harry is a Horcrux and then he has to eventually find out? He, Voldemort? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's aware. So I think he knows there's a, I mean, he knows there's a connection. Well, he thought he was going to make Harry. Exactly. Life, but he didn't think it worked because he didn't kill him. 
Exactly. Well, he doesn't understand the prophecy either. He doesn't know that they're killing Harry. He just thinks that Harry has to die so that he can continue living. And he doesn't understand that by trying to kill Harry, he marked Harry as the one who can overcome him. Because he didn't hear the part. All he heard was the part that said, the son of those who have thrice you know, defied you, born at the end of the seventh month, has power to defeat the Dark Lord. He doesn't hear that he's going to have that power, partly because the Dark Lord's going to give it to him. He's going to mark him, set him apart as the one to do this. Okay? So, he failed in making you into a horcrux. Now, if we take Dumbledore's words literally, and we say that Dumbledore isn't lying, then that means Harry's not a horcrux, but that what occurred on that night, on October 31st, 1981, was merely an accident. Okay? But I don't think so. I think it's because he intended, as Catherine said, he intended to kill Harry. The fact that might be a, you know, a little footnote in the history of Horcruxes. It's that he intended to, and the spell got reversed or didn't work correctly. Part of him gets blown into Harry. Harry, okay. Harry's trying to process all this. So the diary's gone, the ring's gone. The cup, the locket, and the snake are still intact. And you think there might be a Horcrux that was once Ravenclaws or Gryffindors. Are you looking for them? Yeah. <laughs> Harry, can I help? I think you've earned that right. So then Harry, does Voldemort know when a Horcrux is destroyed, sir? Can he feel it? That is, does he feel a lessening of his power? Question, Harry, I believe not. I believe that Voldemort is now so immersed in evil that these crucial parts of himself have been detached for so long he does not feel as we do. Perhaps at the point of death, he might be aware of his loss. But he was not aware, for instance, that the diary had been destroyed until he forced the truth out of Malfoy. When Voldemort discovered that the diary had been mutilated and robbed of all its powers, I am told that his anger was terrible to behold. In other words, Lucius suffered for that one. Yeah, Keegan? Um, if the Create, was it creating like a new Tom Riddle? Would there technically be two Voldemorts? Uh, <laughs> no, there'd be the something year old Voldemort and the 16 year old wandering around. It'd kind of be like, you know, Star Trek with the old Spock and the young Spock, and they, because you, know, you can, you know, warp the fabric of time kind of thing. Or Harry shouldn't, you know, intervene in the past because it'd be kind of awkward if Harry goes up and shakes Harry's hand. It kind of, you know, matter, antimatter, the universe would explode or whatever. Okay? Um, and then they go on and they talk about the diary, and, and Dumbledore explains to Harry that he doesn't think Malfoy really knew what the diary was. Okay? Um, Voldemort's fury about the fact that he threw away the Horcrux for his own gain, the fiasco at the ministry last year, I wouldn't be surprised if he's secretly glad to be safe in that. At this moment, protective custody kind of a thing. Harry, okay, he's still kind of processing. So if all his horcruxes are destroyed, Voldemort could be killed? I think so. Without his horcrux, Voldemort will be a mortal man with a maimed and diminished soul. Never forget, though, that while his soul may be damaged beyond repair, his brain and his magical power remain intact. It will take... Uncommon skill and power to kill a wizard like Voldemort, even without his horcruxes. Harry, but I haven't got uncommon skill. You know, what does um, Gandalf tell Frodo? You must use such wits and strength and heart as you have. Harry, but I don't have any of those. I'm stupid, I'm weak, and I'm a coward. <laughs> Dumbledore, you have a power Voldemort has never had. Harry, like he's channeling Voldemort. Is it the old argument again? 
ooh, love. I can show empathy. I look at flowers and go, ooh, pretty. Is that it? Yes, Harry can love. Which, given everything that has happened to you, is a great and remarkable thing. Harry's life for a moment. He lost his parents at a year old. He had to go live with the Dursleys. He lost his parents again, you know, when he kind of experiences them in the Goblet of Fire. Okay? He loses Lupin as a teacher. He loses Sirius. He sees Cedric die. I mean, the kid's gone through hell and back. And he's still able to love. But what does it mean to love? To feel empathy. Say that again. To feel, other pain. to feel other people's pain. To suffer for them. To be thinking life is a pile of you know what. A great, big, huge one. And here he's right of it when Sirius dies and to offer to help Luna find junk because that's what it frankly really is finding her school things is junk compared to what with you know what Harry's just gone through okay you're still too young to understand how when you Harry Harry's like okay notice is he word Dumbledore is saying. So when you say the prophecy says I'll have the power the Dark Lord knows not it just means love. What was Harry hoping for? You know, he'll be able to transform you know, or something. He'll be able to, you know, get a bigger wand. A big, he'll be able to put, you know, pull, put on a Superman cape. He'll be able to wear, you know, Kevlar that repels, you know, spirit Wand spells and stuff. Yes, Harry, just love. What does Harry mean by just? Only? That's it? That's all I get. I get to go up against the most evil dark wizard the world has ever known, and I'm going to defeat him because I love. Like, love, like I'm going to go, uh, love. And daffodils and daisies are going to sprout. And Voldemort's going to be shooting Nevada Kedavra spells. And they're going to grow. And bunnies are going to hop. In. It'll all be peaceful. Isn't Harry forgetting that Dumbledore told them, told him about the last Yeah, what is love more powerful than? Yeah. Death, time, space, stars. He says it is the most powerful force that there is. Okay? Harry, never forget that what the prophecy says is only significant because Voldemort made it so. Because what is Harry thinking? Well, I need a power. So don't to get Harry back to the text of the prophecy. Okay? So what does the prophecy say? I told you this at the end of last year. Voldemort out as the person who would be most dangerous to him. In doing so, he made you the person most dangerous to him. Notice, who is the person Voldemort is? The person most unlike Voldemort. Voldemort knows nothing of love. He picks Harry, whose greatest ability, Dumbledore says, is love. Which, by the way, uncommon skill and power. Harry says, I haven't, don't have either of those. Dumbledore says, yes, you do. And what are they talking about? Talking about this. What's Harry's uncommon skill? Skill is an ability. Is it flying? Is it expert wand work? Is it potions making? Instinct. Is it what? It's instinct. Instinct. Keep going. Uh, his ability to remove himself or be removed out of himself if someone else needs him. He can stay really calm. Could be. Could 
could be. What does he do in every instance when, quote, death is on the line? Resiliency. Resiliency. What spell does he use when people are throwing a vodka cadaver around? Spell. Yes. He saves or protects other people from themselves. Book seven, which hopefully it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully we'll get to today. What happens when the seven Harry Potters leave Privet Drive and they're attacked by all the Death Eaters? He's very angry. What are you doing? They figure out who the real one is, and then they go to the burrow, and he meets up with Lupin. And, Harry, what the hell are you doing? You used an Expelliarmus curse. And Harry's like, Stan Shunpike isn't himself. If I'd used a stunning spell on Stan, several hundred feet up in the air, what would have happened? He would have fallen off his broom. I'm not going to kill someone just because they're in the way, Harry says. What does Lupin go on and say? Yeah, but Harry, that was really uncommon. It's your, he says, signature spell. Well, what does he mean by that? It's his fallback. It's his failsafe. If nothing else works, it's now, think of what that means. Expelling armies. Expel armies. Expel arms. Well, arms means, right? It can mean bang, bang, or a wand. And it can mean <laughs> their arms. Okay? And if you remove their arms, what can they do? Nothing. You could be like the black. I thought, you know, come here, I'll kick you to death, you know. Come on, you coward. Okay. So if he removes their arms, he's removing their ability to harm others. Well, what does the Avada Kedavra spell do? Who does it harm worse? He's dead? Or the person whose soul gets ripped apart and stays alive? It's the person who's ripped apart. So by using Expelliarmus, Harry is protecting those that he's fighting. Talk about an uncommon skill. So, they go on. You're putting too much store by the prophecy. Because Harry says, yeah, but it comes to the same. It comes to the same what? Harry's thinking... I gotta kill Voldemort, or Voldemort's gotta kill me. Period. The prophecy said. <clears throat> Harry, if Voldemort had never heard of the prophecy, would it have been fulfilled? Would it have meant anything? No. If Voldemort had never heard of the prophecy, what, what would Voldemort never have done? He never would have shown up at your house. So, do you think every prophecy in the Hall of Prophecy has been Harry? But last year you said one of us would have to kill the other. Harry, Harry, only because Voldemort made a grave error. In other words, yes, Harry, one of you does have to kill the, kill the other. Why? Because Voldemort made it that way. Not because there's some glass bottle hanging on a shelf somewhere that says, ooh, <laughs> Lord Voldemort must kill Harry. Harry Potter must kill Lord Voldemort. Okay? He acted on Trelawney's words. If Voldemort had never murdered your father, would he have imparted in you a fierce desire for revenge? No. If he'd not forced your mother to die for you, could he have given you a magical protection he could not penetrate? Don't you see? Voldemort himself created his worst enemy, just as tyrants everywhere do. By pushing the people down, by repressing, by denying them. Until, like a pressure cooker bomb, boom, 
it explodes. Always he was on the lookout for the one who would challenge him. He heard the prophecy, he left, leapt into action. Why did he go after you? Because look at your parents, Harry. Okay? Look at Neville's parents. Both pure bloods. Look at Neville, pure blood. He chose you, Harry. Why? Half blood. By attempting to kill you, Voldemort singled himself singled out the remarkable person who sits here in front of me. Gave him the tools for the job. It's Voldemort's fault that you were able to see into his thoughts, his ambitions, that you even understand parcel tongue. And yet, Harry, despite all this, you've never once been seduced by the dark arts. Go back to book one. What does Harry tell Ron and Hermione before he goes down into the trap door? I will never turn over to the dark side. Where in book one did anybody ever say, come join with me and we will rule the galaxy? <laughs> it doesn't happen. Okay? But Dumbledore is suggesting here, hmm, but maybe that idea has been in Harry's mind. Of course I haven't. He killed my mom and dad. You are protected, in short, by your ability to love. It's his ability to love that stops him from being like Malfoy, enchanted by the dark arts. Okay? The only protection that can possibly work against the lure of power. You know, of course, renunciation of power. Voldemort doesn't renounce it. He wants it. He wants it all. We'll see Dumbledore renounce it in book seven. Okay. Harry never wanted power. Harry never wanted great skill. Harry never wanted to be famous. But as Shakespeare says, sometimes greatness is thrust upon people. In spite of all the temptation you have endured, all the suffering, you remain pure of heart just as you were at the age of 11, when you stared into a mirror that reflected your heart's desire, and what did it show you? It didn't show you immortality or riches. It showed you what? The way to thwart Lord Voldemort. Okay. It didn't show Harry with great power. It showed him how to stop the most evil dark wizard who had ever from regaining power. So what did it what did that really show? Harry's love for what? For everybody else by wanting to stop Voldemort from coming back. Do you have any idea how many wizards have seen what you saw in the mirror? Voldemort should have known then what he's dealing with. In other words, Dumbledore is saying Voldemort should have known then, run away. <laughs> run away from this kid as you can. Harry, excuse me, but he goes on. But now he knows. You flitted into Voldemort's mind. He can't possess you without mortal agony. Why was it Nagini let go of Harry? Or why was it, not Nagini, Voldemort let go of Harry at the end of book five when he was possessing him there in the Ministry of Magic? What did Harry think? That caused Voldemort to let go. Nope. Let him kill me, dumb. Let him kill me. And then the pain will. And I'll see Sirius again. And what happened? All those little daisies and daffodils running. Emerged in his heart. His heart bloomed like the Grinch. His heart grew ten <laughs> times that day. And what happened when his heart grew? Voldemort had to flee. Why? Because he doesn't understand love. It burns him. He never paused to understand the incomparable power of a soul that is untarnished and whole. 
We're going to find out how untarnished and whole Harry's soul is in book seven. Because Hermione, or Moody, can't remember which, make the apologies public, right? So that they can have the seven Harry's rise. It turns gold. And Hermione goes, ooh, Harry, you look much tastier than Crab and Goyle. You know, and Ron's like, excuse me? What did you just say? I was only saying, you know, because it's gold. All right? Rather than looking like snot. <laughs> Harry. He hears Dumbledore, and how does he hear Dumbledore? Like a Peanuts cartoon. If you've ever seen the Peanuts cartoons when the teachers speak, or adults speak. Wah, 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 wah. But it all comes to the same. I've got to try and kill him, or he's got to try and kill me. Dumbledore's like, stupid little. Got to? Of course you've got to. But not because of the prophecy. We both know it. You won't rest until you. Why did he go down into the trap door? To stop Voldemort. Because Voldemort was coming for him again? No, he didn't know Voldemort was coming for him. Okay. Stop for a moment, Harry. Let's do a thought experiment. Say you never heard of the prophecy. You'd never heard of it at all. How would you feel about Lord Voldemort now? You know, lay down on the couch, Harry. Tell me what you think. How do you feel about this? I've watched. Notice what happens just before Harry speaks. A flame seemed to leap inside the chest. Well, what is that flame? We're gonna, we've seen it once before. Okay, In book five, when Harry goes off to grim old place and he he feeling seeing Ron and Hermione again and then they mention Dumbledore and what happens the ardor that had begun spreading goes cold because of the mention of Dumbledore well here when Dumbledore asks how would you feel what happens it's back the flame grows. It builds. I'd want him finished. I'd want to do it. Because of revenge? Dumbledore said it was because of revenge. Is it because of revenge? Of course you would. You see, the prophecy does not mean you have to do anything. The prophecy caused Voldemort to mark you as his equal. See, Harry's thinking of himself and Voldemort as like this. Here's Voldemort, big, strong, powerful. Here's Harry. Take that back. Harry's more like this. <laughs> Harry's more like this. <laughs> Stumpy little pencil. Okay. Against, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble for it. You know, ooh, the English department's going to get mad. <laughs> okay. What does Dumbledore say? No, Harry. You're equals. He made you his equal. What's he saying? You don't need to fear Lord Voldemort. You have what it takes. Okay? In other words, you are free to choose your way. You can turn your back on the prophecy. In other words, Harry, you can say, eh, prophecy, schmophecy. I'm going to the Caribbean. I'm not going to worry about Voldemort. Harry could do that, right? What's the problem? Voldemort's still out there. And he's going to come looking for you. But every time he comes, you can say, no, no, I don't want to play today. I'm going to. He will continue you to hunt you which makes it certain really and Harry's like 
Hello, what have I been saying? That in the end, one of us has got to end up killing the other. Yeah. But then notice what Rowling says. And I think it's, it's probably the most important passage in all of the books. Harry understood at last what Voldemort, what Voldemort, what Dumbledore meant. It was, he thought, the difference between being dragged into the arena to face a battle to the death and walking into the arena with your head. Why? Because Harry thought the prophecy meant he had to do something that is against his will. And now he understands he doesn't. He doesn't have to do it against his will. He understands it is his will that will do it. The difference between dragged into an arena to face a death and walking in with your head held high. What does Harry do when he's there at the cemetery in book four? He's cowering behind Tom Riddle's gravestone. And what does he think? I'm not gonna die like this. I'm not gonna die cowering. And so what does he do? He stands up and steps out from behind it. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die standing up like a man. But he doesn't realize at that point what that really means. Now he does. Okay? The image she uses, well, let me go on first. Some people would say there was little to choose between the two. But Dumbledore knew, and so do I, thought Harry. And so did my parents. There's all the difference in the world. What is the difference? That if, if I were to grab one of you and start dragging you across the room, what are you going to do? You're going to fight me. You're going to say, hell no, stop. I don't want. Okay. The difference between that and your willingly standing up and saying, okay, come on, let's do this. The difference is huge. In the image that she uses of being dragged into an arena is intentional because she's using the image of the early Christian martyrs who were brought into the arena, the call, the hippodrome, and other places. But the vast majority of them, from evidence that we have, were not begged, kicking and screaming. They marched in. They walked in, head held high, to face what? Gladiators? Lions, tigers, bears? Oh my. Gladiators you know. and lions? If you ever saw the film Gladiator, and you saw, you know, Russell Crowe's character goes in as a slave. Sorry, Ashley. I just lost Ashley. Just, now she's thinking about Russell Crowe dressed as gladiator for the entire rest of the class. Okay. You know, you know what does he have to fight? He doesn't only fight gladiators, but lions on and tigers on chains and such. Okay. Think of what kind of death that would entail. Walking into the arena and there being four or five dozen Bengal tigers, which are bigger than lions, by the way, and a hell of a lot more fierce. Huh? Bengal tigers. And then they let them loose. If you've ever been bit by a dog, you have a little teeny tiny inkling because a dog to a tiger would be like a chihuahua which I don't really consider it to be a dog. <laughs> it's an overgrown rat. My cat beats up chihuahuas. Okay? My cat's <laughs> fluffy. Is <her> cat. Okay? <laughs> so this is the image she creates for us. Why? It's foreshadowing. 
The arena is not going to be a literal, literal arena. I've not seen the movie, so I have no idea what they do. What is it? It's the forbidden forest that Harry has to march into. And how does he have to march into it? All alone. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you. Lily and James and Sirius and Lupin are walking either side. But are they really there? I mean, he kisses the snitch, it opens, oh, Red's Rip, Mom, Dad, Remus, sorry you guys have to die. Didn't mean for that to happen. Sucks to be your child, Remus. <laughs> and James and Lily are going, hello, Lady Lupin, Harry Potter, same situation. Notice the nice come full circle, right? He walks in. Do they go all the way with him? So that, you know, Harry goes up, yo, Voldy, here I am. You know, and Remus is sitting over there. <laughs> sitting over there, come on, take one shot at my son, and I'm going to haunt you the rest of you. <laughs> no. Okay? So, what do we see? So, what I had written in my book, when I first read this, that is, when it first came out, before Book 7 come, came out, the most important chapter. So, if Lord Voldemort transferred powers to Harry Potter, does Harry Potter have to die for Lord Voldemort to fully die? Neither can survive while the other lives. What does that really mean? You have, you have Lord Voldemort, and you have Harry Potter. But you have Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort. Well, why do you have Harry Potter? It's not a literal horcrux, but Voldemort did use Harry's blood to what? Resuscitate him. That has got to die. So what happens when they do go in the Forbidden Forest? And Harry just stands there. Notice, no spell of your Nothing. It's almost like he wants that out of Voldemort because Voldemort hadn't figured that out yet. So Harry's like, I don't have a clue. <laughs> For being the greatest magician who ever lived, Voldemort's pretty stupid when it really comes down to it. So, is Harry Potter an unintentional Horcrux? We learn nothing about the spell enchantment used to create Horcrux. And we never do. We never do learn. Well, how do you actually do that? What word do you say? Horcruxio? Horcrucio? Crux is from the same word as cruz. It's the Latin word for cross. Is it a horrible cross? Okay. Keep in mind, cross can be this. Turn that on its side. And what does it do? It quarters. Think of the Sorting Hat song. Condemned I am to quarter, yet I know it is wrong. The Sorting Hat horcruxes the school, and it knows it's wrong. Why? Because the school is meant to be whole. The four chambers of a healthy beating. So what happened when Slytherin left? We were left downhearted. It's like the school has been in cardiac arrest ever since. That's why Harry has to save. Not has to losing his willpower. For the purpose of the novels, has to save Malfoy in the final book. Okay, so let's go on. We get to chapter Sectumsempra, and um, I'm going to skip a bunch. Harry sees Malfoy talking to Moaning Myrtle. Malfoy is crying, saying, nobody can help me. Harry uses Sectumsempra on him. Snape says, you know, how dare you use one of my spells? 
uh, or how dare you use you know, spell. And notice, Snake knows how to stop it. Interesting. Um, we have the Vanishing Cabinet mentioned on page 525 or around there. The one that Montague got lost the previous year. 492 and the British one. Okay. Um, Harry tells Ron and Hermione he wouldn't have used Sectum Semper if he known what it really did. And Hermione's like, told you. Told you you shouldn't have done that. Okay. Um, let's see. Keep going. We have the chapter, The Seer Overheard. Uh, about 537 or so, we have Eileen Prince being mentioned. Okay. And I forty two. Um Trelawney mentions to Harry about the lightning struck tower. The five oh seven in the British one. Calamity disaster near all the time. Harry's like, oh, okay. <laughs> She's gone batso again. Uh, da, 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 da. And then she tells Harry about her interview with Dumbledore, her first interview about the job, about taking divination. And she says, Dumbledore did me the courtesy of calling upon the end. She says, we are rudely interrupted by Severus Snape. What? A commotion outside the door. Barman flew in, etc. Snape was out there listening to keyholes. And Harry puts it together. It was Snape that overheard the prophecy. Snape carried the news of the prophecy to Voldemort. Snape and Pettigrew together had sent Voldemort hunting after Lily and James and their son. It was Snape's fault that my parents are dead. Here he's thinking. Okay. Talk to Dumbledore for his next class. And he talks about a cave, Dumbledore does. And Dumbledore mentions something about Harry not being a very good Occlumens. Because Dumbledore says, what's wrong, Harry? Harry, nothing. What's upset you? I'm not upset. <laughs> so why doesn't Dumbledore say, Harry, I know you're upset with Professor Snape, having been the one to turn your parents into Lord Voldemort? Does that ruin the plan? Well, it would ruin the plan. What else? Kind of like apparating. It's rude to operate into someone else's house. It's rude to read somebody else's mind. So you give them the opportunity of what they are thinking, even if you can read their mind. Okay? Snape's what happened. Dumbledore, mm, didn't mean for you to know about that. And you let him teach here? And he told Voldemort to go after my mom and dad? Professor Snape, bottom of that page, or somewhere on that page, made a terrible mistake. He was still in Voldemort's employ the night he heard that prophecy. And when he told, told, old, told Voldemort, Harry, yeah, but he hated my dad. Harry, you have no idea of the remorse Professor Snape felt when he realized how Voldemort had interpreted the prophecy. It was the greatest regret of his life. Oh, yeah, but, you know, he's still alive. <laughs> he's, a great, he's a very good Ottoman. How do you know he hasn't been tricking you? How can you be sure? Snape's on our side. Notice Dumbledore's reply. I trust Severus Snape completely. What has Harry asked for? Reasons? Evidence? Proof? What does Dumbledore say? I trust him. 
Terry's like, yeah, but I don't. Give me something to trust. Harry goes, I don't. He's up to something with Draco and Malfoy right now, right under your nose. You still, Dumbledore, I've told you my views. Enough. He said it quite calmly, and yet Harry fell silent at once. In other words, when Dumbledore said enough, it wasn't a request. It's kind of like when Tom Riddle said, tell me the truth. Please do not suggest that I take the safety of my students seriously, Harry. I, I do not wish to discuss the matter any further. And it's like, whoop. So you're going to come with me and you're going to do one thing for me. You will obey any command I give to you. Okay. Do you think the situation that just occurred prior to this really sets Harry up to having it easy to obey? No. Because what is Dumbledore saying? You will trust me. I trust Snape. Now I'm asking you, trust me. If I tell you to flee, you obey? Yes. If I tell you to leave me, you'll leave? Yes. Okay. I've got written down at the bottom. He knows. He knows what's planned. But he needs to get the heart crux first. That is, Dumbledore knows what's going to happen when they get to the cave. Okay? So... Um, I already got to skip some. Let's see here. Ron and Hermione, um, Harry speaking with Ron and Hermione. And Harry says, Dumbledore's not going to be here tonight. Malfoy's going to have another clear shot at whatever he's up to. You got to watch him. That is Malfoy and Snape. Get the DA, etc. Okay. And he gives socks to Ron. And Ron's like, what? It's got Felix Felicis in it. Share it between yourselves and Jenny. Say goodbye to her for me. Okay. Harry doesn't know what they're going to be facing. But he's saying, this is it. Dumbledore's going to be away. Malfoy knows. Hell's going to break loose. So, Dumbledore says to Harry that he lets everybody know that he's off into Hogsmeade for a drink. Okay. Or sometimes I visit the Hogshead, or I appear to. What does he mean, or he appears to? Possibly. I'm way out on a limb here. This is sheer conjecture. Who works at Hogshead? Aberforth. Who runs Hogshead? Aberforth. Do they look alike? Yes. So it can look like Dumbledore as well, because a Dumbledore is there, obviously, but it can look like Albus Dumbledore is there. Okay, so <sighs> lost my place. Okay. Um so they go off to the cave. Try to do this quickly. And they notice that there's a blood charm, and Dumbledore talks about how crude this is. This is somewhere around 559 or so, 523 in the British one. And um, Dumbledore tells Harry when Harry offers to cut himself to do the blood thing. Dumbledore says, your blood is worth more than mine. Oh, that seems to have done the trick. Why is Harry's blood more worth more than Dumbledore's? Okay, because it's in Voldemort now. Why else? Because he's the chosen one. Dumbledore's not the chosen one. Notice, Dumbledore cannot defeat Voldemort. Not in the battle of powers. All right? So... 
they get into the lake and the water is all green and all that kind of stuff. And Dumbledore talks about the Inferi and such. But he tells Harry around 566 or so, page 529 in the British one. There's nothing to be feared from a body, Harry, any more than there is anything to be feared from the darkness. Lord Voldemort, who of course secretly fears both, disagreed. Why does Voldemort fear the darkness? Because it's unknown. Because it's unknown. Like death. He wants to know. Notice. That seems to be his ultimate thing. He wants to know. Okay? But once again, he reveals his own lack of wisdom. It's the unknown we fear when we look upon death and darkness, nothing more. He's channeling Socrates. Because Socrates said that exact same thing to Plato. It's the unknown that we fear when we fear death. Okay? We don't fear to go out this room. What's out there is unknown. People didn't fear to run the Boston Marathon on Monday. They didn't know there, well, a couple of people did, <laughs> that there were going to be two bombs exploding. People who went to the fertilizer plant in West Texas last night to work did not fear the unknown. They didn't know that thing was going to blow sky high and kill dozens, if not hundreds of people. Okay? We do things every day, and yet we don't know what the next moment holds. So, Dumbledore goes on. And they make their way to the island. And they see that there's something down in the basin. And Dumbledore says, hmm, but how do we reach it? A potion cannot be penetrated by hand. It cannot be vanished. It cannot be parted. It can't be scooped up or siphoned away. You got to drink it. <laughs> Well, what if it kills you? I don't think it'll work like that. Voldemort would not want to kill the person who reached this island. Why not? Okay. I'm sorry, sir. I, sh I should have said he would not want immediately to kill the person who reached this island. Ah. So what does that really mean? The potion will kill you. It just won't kill you immediately. Okay, so jump to the lightning struck tower. When Dumbledore is there, and he says, Severus, please, please. What's he saying? Hold that thought. Do not forget Lord Voldemort believes that he alone knows about his horcruxes. Okay. So Harry, he then tells Harry, you remember the condition I brought you on? You know, you'll do whatever? Yeah. You're going to follow my command, right? Yeah. You have my orders. Why can't I drink the potion? Because I am much older, much cleverer, and much less valuable. Why else? He's already dying. He's already dying. Dumbledore is already a dead man. Why? Because when he broke Slytherin's locket, or attempted to the first time, okay, and he got the curse on his hand, what did Snape tell him? Yeah, sorry, the ring. What did Snape tell him? I can slow the spread, but I can't, well, how long do I have? About a year. Well, when was it that Dumbledore tried to break the ring. It was in August. It was before Harry's birthday. It's in July. Okay. What time of year is it now? It's end of term. It's late May or early June. His year is almost up. Okay. So... <laughs> And what happens as he drinks? Is it dementia? Don't 
hurt them. Don't hurt them. Please, please, it's my fault. Hurt me instead. Memories. Memories. Is that what it is? Yes. Of what? Ariana's Book seven. Ariana's death. Of Gellert, his best friend. Possibly more. <laughs> okay, lover. Possibly, according to J.K. Rowling. No, 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 not that. I'll do anything. Kill me. Okay. So, they get the locket and go on. And Harry says at the end of that chapter, when they make their way back to Hogsmeade, Hogsmeade Dumbledore says, I'm weak. Okay. Harry says, it's going to be all right, sir. It's going to be all right. We're nearly there. I can operate his back. Don't worry, Dumbledore. I'm not worried, Harry. I am with you. It's kind of like you're the protector. Patronus Potter, you know. And so we get the lightning struck tower. Harry says, uh, Dumbledore says, I need Severus. Okay, Snape, but I'm going to leave you. Harry leaves him. There's Madame Rosmerta, etc. The Dark Mark. So Harry goes off to the school with Dumbledore. And there's Malfoy. And what does Malfoy do? Expelliarmus. Draco, Draco. Page. About um, 585 or so. You're not a killer. How do you know? Okay. You don't know what I've done. Yes, I do. You almost killed Katie Bell, Ron Weasley. You've been trying to kill me all year. But it's like someone who's trying to commit suicide but doesn't really want to commit suicide. They're feeble attempts. Okay. So they go on and they talk a lot. And what does Dumbledore say? Dumbledore says, you know, you're at my mercy. Now, I have seen this part of the film, of whatever film this is. God, so completely asinine. Who does Harry see on the tower in the film? Snape. And what does Snape do? Like that's going to stop Harry from allowing Dumbledore to be killed. Don't you think it would pretty much take ropes and irons and chains and a full body bind curse to stop Harry? Like what Dumbledore puts him under <laughs> in the story? Yes. He's not going to let Dumb. Just completely idiotic. So anyways, Snape comes up in Fenrir Greyback. And we hear Last page, there stood Snape, his wand clutched. Severus, the three Death Eaters fall back. Even the werewolf seemed cowed. Severus, please. Avada Kedavra. Dumbledore is blasted into the air. Where have we seen when Avada Kedavra has been used? When we've seen Avada Kedavra used. Where has somebody been blasted into the air so that they fly up over the battlements? Never. When Moody kills the spider, what does the spider do? When Cedric gets killed, falls to his feet. No, no, no. This is Dumbledore. No, you know, he's got to go out with a panache, you know, as it were. So that when Dumbledore died, if you got on the internet when the book came out, okay, and started to read stuff about Dumbledore's death, there are all kinds of theories. Like, maybe he's not really dead. Because nobody else does this. All right? And when Hagrid finds him at the base of the astronomy tower, what do we see? Blood trickling from his mouth. Well, that didn't happen to anybody else who has a Vada Kedavra. Yeah. yeah, but this was the internet, and people are trying to weave all kinds of theories about how he's not really dead because I was Dumbledore can't die. All right? So we get the flight of the prince. Harry goes off after Snape. 
Okay? And Snape yells at him, here you are, you know, using my curse. Which tells Harry what? What? Can't be. Okay? We get to chapter of the Phoenix Lament. What happens to Fox? Flies off into the sunset. We never see Fox again. Why? Is he Dumbledore's Patronus? Do -do 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 -do. Okay. Somewhere out in the darkness, this is 573 in the English one, or about 612, 613 in the American one. A phoenix was singing. Okay. And McGonagall then says, next page, Snape, we always thought we could trust Snape. And Remus and the others are all, we, we always kind of knew Snape was bad. Okay. Um, Hermione says, I was so stupid. What does she mean? Snape was bad all along. Lupin says, I saw him, saw him run straight through the cursed barrier. McGonagall, he must have known a spell we didn't, because what did he do? He jumped through the window and flew like a big, giant bat. But he's not a vampire, because it was all false crumbs, okay? So, what happens to Bill? Gets bit by Finn Weir. And then Fleur says, because Mrs. Weasley's like, oh, well, Fleur, you thought I would not wish to marry him? Or perhaps you hoped? <laughs> Fleur's not so dumb. She's dumb, but she's not that dumb. What do, what do I care how he looks? I am good looking enough for both of us. I think. You know, Ron's sitting there drooling. <laughs> All these scars show is that my husband is brave, and I shall do that. Okay. And she pushes Mrs. Weasley away. It's like, way to go, Fleur. You know? Tonks finally lets it out. I don't care either. I don't care. I told you I'm going to I love you, You know? When book seven came out, and obviously everybody now knows what happens in book seven. Remus and Tonks, you know, they bite it. What? <laughs> <laughs> book seven came out. I took my two oldest kids, and we went down to Waterstones, the biggest bookstore in London, down on Piccadilly. A uh, student had given me a couple tickets to um, the iTunes podcast party which was this big, huge thing. Uh, it was going to be this podcast worldwide and all this kind of stuff. So that we could go down and go to the party and stuff. And we did, but we left before the actual book sale began because you had to be in line for that. That was a different line. Okay. The, by the time we left the podcast party, and we left because I'm an old funny daddy and I hate lines and I hate <laughs> massive groups of people. Um, but when we left, it was, I don't know, 9 or 9.30 at night. In the line to get into Waterstones for the midnight sale beginning was over a mile long. And I remember we walked out and there were two or three couples dressed as Tonks and Lupin. <laughs> you know, we went to... Books, etc. I don't remember what it is. Books, etc. Which was about a mile away from the dorms that we stay in. You know, no line at all. We get in, buy the books, leave. You know, my kids are already reading the book on the bus as we're, you know, leaving, etc. And they stayed up all night so that, the, you know, the next day, everybody now knows Tonks and Looper. I, I just can't imagine what the people who dressed up 
as Thompson Lupin felt like that day. Okay. So Mrs. The Weasleys are talking, and Lupin says, she deserves somebody young and old. He's older than Tonks by about 20 years. Mr. Weasley, but she wants you. In other words, she doesn't want somebody whole and young. She wants you. And after all, Remus, young and whole men do not necessarily remain so. In other words, look at the world they inhabit. Okay? It's pretty bad. Things are pretty bleak. Mr. Weasley is saying, don't say no to love. Is Lupin saying, ew, Nymphadora Tonks? Are you kidding me? Blech. No. Lupin loves Tonks. But he's trying to be like Spider-Man. Oh, I can't love you <laughs> because, bet, you're saying, love while you can. Dumbledore would have been happier than anybody to think that there was a little more love in the world, says McGonagall, as Hagrid walks in. Okay? In other words, use it while you can. Enjoy it while you can. And now there's a new picture on the headmaster's wall. And there's Dumbledore sleeping. Okay? They find out Madame Rosmerica was under the Hufflepuff, uh, Hufflepuff curse, <laughs> under the Imperious curse. Okay. Um, and they talk a lot, and there's the burial, and Harry tells Ron and Hermione what's, what he's going to do, and we'll, we'll skip the burial and such. But notice what finally comes out. The very end. Harry and Jenny. And what does he tell Jenny? We can't, we can't be together. because. And she's like, you know, F you. We're going to be together because I'm going to follow you no matter what. All right? Okay. Now we can start Deathly Hallows.